All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. So this is going to be our tutorial first on the deep etching and then taking these images into After Effects and animating. So this is going to be a long one. Uh, probably stitch both of them together, but going to be as succinct as possible. So what we're going to do, we have got three objects or three layers rather inside of Photoshop. We've got our figure, we've got our object, and we've got our setting. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to remove our astronaut. We're going to remove this space thing. I think we'll keep this one. And we're going to replace the spacecraft with our buggy. And we're going to replace our astronaut with our figure. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the figure. Going to be the easiest of all of them, I think, to do. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the original images are always spared. We don't want to do a destructive method where we get rid of these and we have to re-import them later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them all on quickly, select them, and come on over to this little folder button over here. Clicking on this is going to place them in a group, and I'm going to rename that group OG, because I like to call them the original gangster. And there we have it. Then we can open these up. We're going to select all three of them again. We're going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate them. Strange shortcut, I know. Once we've got our duplicates, we can go ahead and close our OG layer. We're going to lock it by clicking on this little padlock icon at the top of our layer panel. And we're going to turn off the visibility. There we go. Now we're going to tell After Effects that we actually want to be able to cut this information out. As a smart object, we wouldn't be able to do that. It's going to tell us that it can't edit a smart object in that way. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to come on down to the rasterize option. And we're going to click on that. And you'll notice that your thumbnail changes immediately. All of a sudden now it's an image with a checkered background that's kind of showing this background over here. And uh, it doesn't have that smart object thumbnail anymore, which means that we can now be a little bit destructive with this method. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come on over to my tool panel and I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. Shortcut for that is W. And we're just going to use this. Now, if you want to increase your size, you can use the square brackets on your keyboard. The uh, left-hand square bracket makes it smaller. Right-hand square bracket makes it bigger. Alternatively, you can come on up to this little section over here. You'll see we've got the normal selection, additive selection, and reductive selection. And then we've got the size. Clicking on that, we can then just increase the size or decrease the size as necessary. Okay, we're going to leave it on additive for now, which means that every time we click and drag, it's going to add information to our selection. So I'm just going to click and drag. And because it's nice and big and we've got nice contrast here, for the most part, this is going to be fairly simple to select. Don't worry about these sections of sand that get caught up in it. We'll be able to deselect those now. But we need to make sure that we catch every part of this person can't risk sort of having it look as though she's lost information as we've cut her out. All right, I'm going to zoom in here and really get into it. This is where I'm going to grab the lasso tool. Shortcut for that is L. And I'm going to use this to, oopsie, Holding down shift, I'm going to use that to click and drag to select that. So holding down shift is your additive modifier. Every time you hold down shift, it's going to add to the selection. And every time you hold down alt, it's going to remove the selection. Okay, so let's get as much of this person as we can. Okay, a little bit more there. There we go. So for the most part, we've got her selected. Um, this is when we really want to come in nice and close and just make sure that we're getting the edges. Uh, we'd rather have a little bit more information than less. We can always remove the information later, but we can't bring it back. So I'm just going to grab those. And I'm going to grab this. Make sure that we've got everything for her hat. So still holding down shift, that's what's allowing me to add these to my selection. Okay, now we need to start removing information that we don't want. Let me grab a little bit more of this arm here. So for example, we want to clean up here around the fingers slightly. So I'm going to hold down Alt with my uh, keyboard. 
I think it's option on a Mac. And I'm just going to remove those. And I'm going to remove this. I'll just re-add information if I accidentally cut it out. There we go. Okay, and then I don't need this portion of the beach, so we'll get rid of that. This portion over here by the knee I can get rid of. Try and add those. This section over here, just follow along the leg, remove there. Okay, so we're going to remove the sand completely. Um, I think we are going to be using the information. Let me just go ahead and look here quickly on our moon. I wonder if we can leave the dirt between her legs. No, that's not going to work. So we are going to remove this here. Just keeping it rough. We're going to soften these edges up in a moment. And then we're going to do our best to put them in the scene. And uh, then we'll be painting some information in as well. Small of her back, add that there. Okay, so I think we've got everything that we need from this image. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and you're going to see these, these lines that you've been adding. I probably should have mentioned earlier. These are called marching ants. And these show us that everything inside of these lines is currently selected. Now, I need to have either the lasso or the selection tool selected in order to actually interact with our object. When you right click, you're going to have some various options to use with the selection. So you can either deselect everything, which I don't recommend. You can select the inverse, which means that everything outside those lines will be selected. We've got the option to feather, which means we're going to soften those edges. And we've got select and mask. We're going to go ahead and click on select and mask. Takes a little bit of time there for this little preset to open up. Uh, what we're going to do here is leave the default. I think we're going to leave it on object aware. Let's say OK to that. And we're going to say OK. So now, why didn't it work? Sorry, we're going to just go layer via cut. That makes it a lot easier. So what that does is it places it on its new layer. Now we've got our person standing here, and we've got the original background. So we're going to keep the background. We're going to go ahead and drop that under the OG image, just in case we need any of that information. We could always come back and select it, and then dump it into this one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the selections for the van, as well as then for the space station. And you guys can sort of watch the speed run of that, and then I'll show you guys how to do the deep edging.
Okay, so now I've selected all the windows as well. We're going to go ahead and right click on those and we're going to say layer by cut. That's going to then give us the ability to turn off the uh, windows. So we're just going to drop that at the bottom as well, not deleting anything. But there we go. Now we've got our camper van. I think the space one's probably going to be the hardest, but let's give it a go. So once again, right click, rasterize. This one's going to need to have a couple of layers cut. And because this is the background, we're going to have a lot of painting in to do for this. So let's start off by getting the flag and the astronaut out the way, and then we'll worry about this thing in the background.
All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut him out. That's going to place him on his own layer. We actually want to get rid of him. So we're going to place him once again down at the bottom. And we want to try and keep as much of this background as possible. So we're going to put a flag on its own layer, move it away, and put this thing on its own layer. Well, in fact, we could actually do both of them at the same time, to be honest. That would probably be easier. Um, but I think we're going to leave this because it sort of is affecting the slope of that mountain. This will be able to paint in quite easily. But uh, I think this section over here we should try and keep. Okay, so let's see what our quick selection tool can do with this. sure we get the whole flag let's undo that selection there okay yeah, the rest i'm probably going to have to lasso now because it's too dark to actually recognize the contrast hold down shift i also keep forgetting to do it thankfully you can hit command or control z to undo if you accidentally deselect stuff so just to make that make sense if i click over here and it disappears command or control z brings it back again Okay, let's not worry about that. We can always paint those out later. We definitely want that. So the typical rule of thumb is you want to remove as little as possible because the more you remove, the more you need to put back in later. But because we've got a fairly mono, well, completely monotone, actually, uh, image, and because we're going to be turning everything else black and white, we can get away with just using the gray of the background when we paint things in. So we've got that. Uh, I'm going to try and leave this section over here just so it's got something to work with there clean up the selection on that arm and then we got to oops clean up the flag pole Yeah, getting a little bit lazy with the selection here, but I'll clean it up. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Right click, go ahead and layer via cut. There's the Moonlander gone. Now we can start thinking about how we're going to do this. So I'm just going to place my image here for now. I'm probably going to shrink it down and try and make it fit more in that scene. I'm going to have to mask a bit of it out to fit behind this object here. So I'm going to go ahead and with this layer selected, hit Command and Control T. That opens up the transform option. If you hold down Shift, it makes a GUI. If you don't hold down Shift, it keeps it the way it is. It's kind of backwards. We're going to go ahead and put that there. Something like that. We'll worry about the shadows in a moment. We might even go back to the original image to get that. But there's that for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock it for now. And let's place our lady in the image. I'm going to kind of place her where he was. Just because we've got the shadow already. And then we've got an object that we can push far away. Object that we can have closer. Um, damn, now that I think about it, we are actually going to need to put this on its own layer if we want the parallax effect to work. So let's do that. Go ahead and grab our moon copy again. 
and let's oopsie, do our best to select this one. Just make sure you're on the right layer. If you can see here, so I've got layer one selected, even though it's not visible. And if I try and make a selection, nothing happens. But when I reselect my correct layer, it actually makes, if I can get rid of the selection now quickly, deselect, there it goes, it actually makes a selection. So let's see what we can do here. This one we want to be precious with because we actually want to keep the slander. The astronaut and the other guy we're going to get rid of. Okay. Now I'm going to hold down Alt, which activates the negative modifier. And just clean up that selection here. Definitely don't need any of that. And then zoom in for the lasso tool to clean it up. Okay, the wheel. I think that's the wheel. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the rover selected. Let's go ahead and cut that onto its own layer. So once again, layer via cut. This one we're gonna keep. I'm gonna rename this as rover. We're gonna name our first layer as lady. If that's not too sexist a term to use these days. The other one's going to be Van. And there we go. So when we're making this an animation, we're going to have the rover in front of the van, like so. So this is going to be closer. She'll be closest, and then this will be um, further away. And then obviously, we're going to cut that mountain out in the background. What we also possibly can do, this is why it's a good idea not to get rid of things, if we quickly bring this back up, how about we keep the flag? Why not? So I'm just going to hide everything else so that I only have this visible. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to select like so. And because there's no information around it, I don't have to worry. I can just do that. Once again, layer via cut. Let's take the shuttle back down to the bottom. And this is our flag. So we're going to call that flag. OK. Yeah, I think adding the flag to this could actually be pretty cool. All right. Um, actually, we do need that image one more time. Sorry, we actually need to cut out the background. It's not that one the moon. Okay, so for this one we've got a fairly simple uh, first person perspective. All we're going to do is we're going to separate this darker layer from that middle layer that kind of comes up over here and then we're going to separate that area over there as well. So we're not going to worry about the foreground at all. We're going to sort of hope that the viewer's attention is here in the center. So with that selected I'm just going to make a rough selection to begin with. Just start making a dent in it always forget to hold down shift. I'm so used to using a pen for this. I'm going to select all that. Okay, and then I don't need that section. Let's zoom in here. We're going to get rid of that section. Uh, 
that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, right click, we're going to say layer by cut again, we're going to call this foreground. Let's hide it and select our moon again. This one over here, we're now going to do the middle ground. Looks like it kind of slants up behind the rover area or the, the lander area that we cut. So let's go ahead and cut it there. So that's part of the selection. So even though I've got two different areas selected, I can still right click, layer by cut, and it puts both of those areas on for me. We're going to call that mid ground. This one over here, obviously we need this kind of like June. So we'll grab that and that and that. We're going to right click and we're going to once again layer by a cut. This is going to be our dune, D-U-N-E. And that leaves us with space, which I'm going to go ahead and rename my moon copy to space. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now comes the chance where we need to start painting information in and softening our edges. So what we're going to do is let's paint in our background here. This one's nice and simple. It's just straight black. So we're just going to hit B for brush. I'm going to come down here and click on this strange little arrow thingy so that black is the color on top. And then I'm going to make my brush big, increase the size, increase the hardness to 100. And we can just paint that in literally like so. so. That way it doesn't matter where our dune sits and where everything else sits. Because we've got it correctly. Okay. Next up, let's do let's do this the dune next. Well, I guess we'll work our way up. So now we're going to start using the clone stamp tool. Clone stamp tool, essentially how this works is, uh, let me make this brush nice and big. So when you hold down Alt or Option, you get a little crosshair. And when you click that crosshair, it remembers exactly that space. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. And then I'm going to, oops, I've got the wrong layer selected. So I'm going to go ahead and just reselect. Let me get that little cross so you can actually see this. And then wherever you take your brush to, if I just make this 100% hard, it makes a duplicate of that image. So it's not moving, it's getting that exact spot. And when I click and drag, you'll see that little crosshair is moving across the screen and that's where it's sampling its information from. So it's getting it across that line. As I drag it, you'll see as I cross over to where there's no information, so where there's no information around this here, you'll see as I'm clicking and dragging, the little crosshair is going back and forth. When there's no information, it can't clone stamp anything. So that's when you have to hold down Alt, reselect, and paint. Okay, but let's make this a little bit neater. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sample there. Now I'm going to just paint down, and I'm just going to click a couple of times because we can fix this just now. Uh, get that one over there. See if I can get them to merge. <laughs> And then here, we're going to go ahead and do this. And I'm actually going to get rid of these little crosses so that they aren't really visible. And then they can't tell that we've done some Photoshop. Now you're starting to see that we've got these splotches. And that's very, very easy to see. So one way that we could go about doing that is if I actually undo everything I've done here, I could grab my brush and I could set the hardness down slightly. And what this means is when I create... The, the stamp, it doesn't have the harsh edges that you saw me have uh, earlier. So I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to get rid of that, sample over there, and just start trying to paint this in. Sample there. Don't stress too much about getting these edges perfect, because we're going to paint them. Okay, and we're going to paint this dune as far down as we can because this is going to be hiding behind other layers. So we're not going to see the shitty sort of bottom section, but we are going to make sure that we don't have any gaps when we're paint, um, animating this. Okay, 
So now we're starting to get the, an issue with clone stamping where it looks kind of the same. Uh, we can see a repeated pattern going throughout this. And as I continue, you'll see that that pattern becomes more and more prominent. So what I want to do is I'm now going to grab what is called the healing brush tool. If we get rid of these crosses over here quickly. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm going to hit J. Um, that brings up, so it kind of just selects that one for us there. So this is the content aware move tool. We're not going to be using that. We're going to grab the healing brush tool. And what the healing brush tool does is it samples the information around it and it tries to find the middle ground. So it blends it together for us. Once again, we're going to drop the hardness down to probably about 30%. So that should do it. And I'm just going to run this. I can hold down Alt to choose an area to sample information from, and I can use that to merge that information there. And I can just soften that slightly. You can see that it's kind of creating weird artifacts at the edges there. That does sometimes happen. If you see it, just drop the size of your brush down slightly. There we go. We've kind of got a moon landing. We're going to have to fill in our middle ground next. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my dune for now. Well, actually, I'm going to just check that it is working. So I need to paint this dune even lower for that section over there. So let's focus on that first. So once again, with the clone stamp tool, I'm just going to paint this all the way down to the bottom. Like so. Okay, uh, then we can focus on our mid-ground. Now this one's going to be a little bit harder to do. What we're going to do here is um, I'm going to reduce the size of my brush. I'm going to use hard. I think I'm going to use a hard edge for this. So let's go ahead and sample that. And we're going to try and line up the edges. I'm just going to follow the line that it's giving me because no one's going to know if I'm changing the trajectory slightly from the original image. Okay. Try and get that there. Yeah, so this is looking pretty horrible at the moment, but let's trust in our Photoshop learned learning our skills here to try and fix it. Put that there, try and fill this in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this in. I'm not too worried about the artifacts that I'm leaving because we're going to use the brush tool, sample an area that doesn't have that information, and paint it back. Don't worry about the edges here. That's looking a bit strange, but we're going to be painting that out in a moment. So don't stress too much about it. Let's see where our foreground goes to. I need to paint it further down. Let me get this information down here. Get the clone stamp tool. Once again, just paint even lower. And because this is going to be the bottom, and as we've kind of said, it's going to be hiding underneath the other layers, this bottom portion we can just not give much of a damn about, to be perfectly honest. So I'm just going to make it super rough. Hit J, and I'm going to start clearing it up slightly. And the goal is just to like make sure that these repeating patterns don't repeat. So we want to paint them out. So even if there is a pattern every now and then, they just mustn't look as though they've been copied from right next to each other. I'm going to try and paint that in like so. And we'll paint the rest of it out just now. Okay, so let's see. There are foreground. That definitely goes low enough. So that's perfect. There's our sand dune. That goes behind that. And we're going to clean up that little section over there. Don't worry about that. I see some repeating patterns. I'm just going to hide my dune here and just fix those quickly. Get rid of that. I'm kind of just placing my little marker anywhere I kind of feel at this point because it's all gray it kind of blends into itself quite nicely I'm 
Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Um, all right. So that's kind of our sort of assets, right? So we've got our sand dune. We've got space. Um, we've got the dune, we've got our midground, we've got our foreground, we've got our van, we've got our lady, we've got the rover and the flag. So we actually do need to do the foreground quickly. There are some things here that need to be filled in. So it's going to be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my clone stamp tool again, and I'm going to sample from over here. And then I'm going to run that line across. Sample from over here, run that line across. We definitely want to fill up this gap here so that when we move our flag doesn't stick in the, uh, like, get cut out. Grab this edge and just drag it along. You'd be amazed at what you can get away with with a little bit of perseverance in this software. So there we go, that's looking pretty solid. I do see some repeating artifacts, but because there's so much like so contrasting shadows over here, that actually makes perfect sense. So we're just gonna leave it. Um, I wanna see, that was a part of the rover, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna soften the edges that are visible. As long as they can be seen, we need to soften them. And this is where the real time consuming part starts. So I recommend we go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and call this parallax deep edging exercise. And I'm gonna save that on my computer, please. And I'm just gonna drop it on desktop for now. Uh, because it's got a, sorry, you can't have a high, uh, forward slash. There we go. Okay, so space we don't have to worry about. Sand dune, let's focus on this one because it's going to be the easiest. So as I mentioned in class in the first week of term, we need to make sure that the edges don't look as though we've cut this out of a magazine and placed them here. So what we need to do is we need to mask our layer, so have the dune selected, and we need to soften the edges. Now we could erase the edges. But that is a destructive method. If we made a mistake, there would be no way to get that information back. So instead, we're going to create a mask over it, and we're going to paint on that mask to soften out the edges. Let me explain. So we've got the dune layer selected. I'm going to come on down to this little Japanese flag-looking icon over here, and I'm going to click on that. You'll see immediately the layer I had selected now has this little link icon and a blank white thumbnail. This thumbnail represents a piece of paper that we've put over the uh, the sand dune. So if I go ahead and get the black paintbrush and making sure that I've got the, th the white thumbnail selected, when I paint over an area, whoops, I need the actual brush tool. When I paint over an area, it hides it. You can see there's a little black spot to show where I've drawn. And if I hit X to make my white color on top, I can paint it back in again. So this is a completely non-destructive method. It's going to allow us to clean up our edges and we can always come back later and refine them as we need to. This one we need to bring our softness down to about 35%. Let's type in 35 there. And uh, hardness, we're gonna bring that down to 30%. There we go. Now, it can be difficult to run along in a horizontal format, so I want to introduce you to the rotation tool. If you hit R and click and drag, you get a little compass. If you hold down shift, it'll snap you to the different cardinal points. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on its side. Which way do I want to go? Let me go this way. And once again, with that thumbnail selected, brush on the black paint so that I can hide information. Now I zoom all the way in and I start softening the edges. That's too much. We're also gonna play around with our opacity. So right now opacity is set to 100 and that's proving to be a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I'm gonna take it down to about, let's make it like 60% means that we'll be running over certain areas more than once, but it gives us a second chance if we make a mistake with it. Mm -hmm. 
So this process is definitely a lot faster if you've got a Wacom or some kind of tablet. But I'm doing this with a mouse. I've always done it with a mouse. It's time consuming. It's bad for your hand, but it's doable. Okay, so here I've gone a little bit too deep. I oh, know what I haven't. So there, I'm just going to clean up this edge here. I'm going to hit zero to take my opacity up to 100. Uh, if you hit a number on the keyboard, it gives you that percentage. So if you type in 55, it gives you 55. If you type in 100, it gives you 100. And if you type in 4, it gives you 40. So if you give it a, a full number, like 1, it'll take it to 10. 4 will take it to 40. 5 will take it to 50, etc. Okay, so there's that one done. I'm going to go ahead and hit R, just put it back into place. We do the same for the midground. This is where we get the opportunity to paint out all that trash over there. I can see now this is very messy, so I'm just quickly going to clean it up a little bit more. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on a, on a class exercise, but obviously I would spend a lot more time on this if it was uh, my marks riding on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. Grab my brush. Remember to select the layer and give it a mask. And now I can zoom in. For this, just to clean up this edge, I'm going to make this brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to give it... 100% hardness and 100% opacity and I'm just going to run that along the edge over there. It's just getting rid of any of the artifacting or issues that we left behind with the painting in of information. Okay, then I'm going to check the sand dune and make sure that that's still working. See a bit more cleanup there to do. But now we go in, bring the hardness back down to about, I'm going to take it to 30 again, 35. Bring the opacity down to 40. And once again, start softening these edges. Maybe I'll take the opacity to 70 just to make this a little bit faster. If I accidentally take too much information out, I just hit X, I paint it back in with the white paint. Okay, there's the sand dune edge done. Let's see what that looks like against the dune. That looks fine. We've got a visual difference there. We can always play around with its curves a bit later. Uh, foreground. Let's go ahead and do this. This is where we really need to pay a little bit more attention with the 
intensity that we're working the edges. Once again, select the foreground layer, apply a mask, grab your brush tool, get to work. Trying to incorporate a little bit of roughness to the edges, try and simulate a rocky surface a little bit. Then this thing over here, I'm going to get rid of that completely. I think I left it in from my selection. Okay, Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to put up my midground and see. Um, they do look a little sharp, and I see something here that I want to fix. But uh, uh, yeah, I can see where I was clicking with my brush here. Um, I don't think we need to worry too much about that, though. I think that'll be okay. So we have got our scene. Let's go ahead and save once again. And now we can worry about the van. So the van definitely needs some shadow under it. So we're going to quickly go back to where we cut the van out from over here. And let's just focus on getting this dark area. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab my lasso tool. Just focus on like the immediate shadow kind of around here. I don't actually know if this is going to work. We're going to see together. It's definitely something we could try and paint in as well. And we could try and use the full shadow of, uh, you know, like the entire casting shadow. I'm just not sure it's going to work, but I think let's go ahead and select it because the more we've got, the more we can paint out if necessary. Um, so I'm going to grab my lasso tool and just remove these little splotches. No, actually, let's keep them. That could add something to it. Layer by cut. That gives us something to go under our van. So let's get to our van. I've got the, this layer here. I'm going to hit Command or Control T to get the free transform tool. And I'm just going to scale this to roughly what, like where it was originally. Hit it there. Okay. So what we're going to try and do here now is we're going to select our layer. We're going to call this Van Shadow, just so we know what we're working with. We're going to create a mask on it. I'm going to grab my brush and make that nice and big. But I'm going to make the opacity down to 30. Yeah, just down to 30. I'm just going to try and start off by painting those harsh edges out. And I can paint over the van because that's not a part of this layer. So that's not something to worry about. Just kind of trying to clean this up a little bit, can soften it the more we get further away from it and reveal some of the crater. Um, and then let's just soften that edge up there a little bit. Okay, that's pretty rough, but let's go ahead and see what we can do with that. So now I'm going to select the actual thumbnail for that layer. And I'm going to try and play around with the blend mode. So here where you see the word normal, if I click this drop down and I hover over it, I get a bunch of different options. And this determines how the information is blending over one another. 
what we're trying to find is something that doesn't look absolutely fucking hideous. So it looks as though multiply is the way to go. We're going to set it on multiply. And then we're going to drop the opacity down to, let's make it 70%. Oh, let's make it 80%. 90, yeah, let's leave it. I know I'm very being very indecisive, but this is my first time doing this one as well. Okay, we're going to leave it at 100%. And then uh, we're going to play around with that being black and white once we play with everything else. Okay, so I'm going to start off now by undoing that. Now we're going to bring in our lady. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and lock the van shadow and let's just lock all of our layers for now that's probably a good idea uh, the van definitely needs to have its edges softened as well but thankfully it looks like it's done a pretty decent job to begin with but can't be lazy so to unlock a layer you can't just well you can click on the padlock but you can also click on the the lock on the layer itself um, I'm gonna bring my size down and opacity, I'm going to bring up to 75. And I'm just going to zoom in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to turn on the space layer. Uh, I'm not going to have it selected, but now I can see how harsh these edges look against the black background. So with my van layer selected, give it a mask, B for brush, and start softening the layers. We're getting through this quite quickly, but I want you guys to keep in mind that this is just a class exercise. So this one's not for marks. I am expecting to see a lot more effort and time being placed into the Renaissance animation. Because you will not be able to get good results going this quickly on a, on a Renaissance painting, as you can imagine. that somehow change my color here just make it black again Clean up around the wheel. Still going to try and soften up the edges of the tire here just so that the edges aren't sticking out sort of into the shadow. Do it for this side as well.
Like there, for example, I've definitely taken out too much information. So I hit X to select my white color, I paint it back in, hit X to select my black color, carry on painting it out again. All right, so that could be better, could be worse. You zoom out, you see where you need to carry on, and you touch it up. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut for this process. You got to do it until it's right. And unfortunately, it's my job to keep telling you to do it until it's right. But I think for here, this is looking fine. If I zoom out, it's looking a lot better. The windows, oh, these need to be cleaned up, definitely. Those look trash. So let's soften them up here. So even though these are solid bars going across the window, we're still softening along the edge of them because the way light works, it falls off around the edges of objects. So even though it's a solid object visible hanging in a void essentially it's still going to have the fall off included in the process clean that up Not too much Oh, I can feel the carpal tunnel setting in. Okay, let's see what that's looking like. Yeah, that's a lot better. I'll do these ones next. I'm just taking out the highlights here. there. I'm getting sloppy now. Okay, so there, oh my word, <laughs> I keep forgetting about these damn holes. Uh, okay, let's quickly do this one. Okay, I think that's the bloody camper van done. It's good enough for now. We're going to slap a black and white filter over it just now. Next up is our lady and then the Ra Land Rover and the flag. But you'll forgive me while I light up a cigarette quickly. All right, let's dive into the lady here. So 
I think I'm going to keep the space background on it as well, just so I can see these stark edges. Once again, with the layer selected, layer mask, brush, let's get stuck in. So what I've done now is I'm cheating, I've taken the opacity to 100%, which is never a good idea. And it's probably going to kick me in the ass later. But right now I'm just trying to get rid of these very stark, bright edges. When I get to the skin, I'm going to have to be soft, but because we're working with an object, we can kind of get away with it. So I'm going to take down to 80. Okay. Turn off space now and Carry on. If I paint too much out, paint it back in again. If you ever can't see what you're doing, like right now I can't really see my mouse cursor, if you turn on caps lock you get a crosshair. If you ever see a crosshair and you want to get rid of it, turn off caps lock. That sometimes confuses folks. Okay, I'm going to turn off Dune as well, or the middle ground at least, so I can see once again what I'm doing. Kind of another trick is the bigger you make your brush, the more fall off you have along the edge. So you can actually kind of get away with running the edge of a big brush along the border that you're trying to soften. If you want to make large strokes. Just be willing to go back and paint in the information you accidentally take out. Just so you guys are aware as well, the same process that we have with Illustrator, updating our assets, is also an option with Photoshop. So if I've defined halfway through my animation that my edges are still too hard, I can just come back into this Photoshop file, and as long as I don't rename the layer or add anything new, I can paint over the mask and overwrite the save, and it will then make that adjustment for me. 
here, get a little bit smaller, a little finer detail. Okay, and then between the knees. Yeah, it definitely took too much out there, so paint it back in. Okay, let's see what that's looking like. Uh, it's not looking too bad. If we add our dunes, she looks like she belongs. A little bit of a highlight there, but that works with the lighting that we've got. Uh, all right, next up, let's do the rover. Turn all that off, turn space on, start painting on the mat, on the mask rather. What am I even looking at? The bottom of it, yeah. Let's get rid of that. Hopefully those top edges seem to be quite blurry as is, just with the fact that it's an old photo. It's mostly these harsh edges here. Okay. Um, let's get rid of whatever that is to round this shape out a little bit. I think that was excess information. Soften that. Okay, and then that's the uh, that's space ground underneath it. I think we'll just leave that there. Um, okay, so once again, let's look at everything that looks like it belongs. So that's looking fine. 
last let's do the flag so once again I'm going to turn everything off including the space layer grab the flag grab my mask and let's do the last layer Normally, in an animation with a flag, you would need to go into 3D and do a cloth simulation. But because we're on the moon and there's no atmosphere, we don't need to worry about wind. Okay, so I'm just going to soften these edges a little bit too much and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and run a brush down the center of that. So swap my color over, paint that back in, take it up to 100% and minimize the brush size. And then just focus on that main sort of center. And you can kind of see here that I didn't clean these edges very well at all. Okay, that's roughly right. Let's see what this all looks like together now. Pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and save. And then we're going to do a little bit of color correction. And uh, from there, we're going to move forward. Okay, so what we want to do now is just try and make this all feel as though we're in one space, right? And what we need to do here is we're actually going to do something a little bit destructive. We're going to apply uh, color gradients over each of our layers, and we're going to flatten them. Because if we apply a single color gradient over everything, After Effects isn't going to know what to do with that. So what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to unlock all of our layers. I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to call this one Edits. And I'm going to put all the layers that I've made so far into the Edits folder. Then I can go ahead and select them. Command or Control J to duplicate them. Drag them back out of that folder. Now I've got the edits that I've done locked and safe. So if I fuck up anything now, I can always come back. And now we can do something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with start off with the shadow layer. So with this selected, we're going to go ahead and come on up to the adjustments tab. If you don't see that, come on up to view. Uh, or under window rather and find adjustments. So that's window adjustments and what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our curves Well, let's go ahead with hue and saturation first. We're going to grab hue and saturation um, We you'll see here that it has applied a hue and saturation layer above the van shadow and Let's take the saturation away from it completely. So we've just dropped that down to zero um, there we go. That's all we need to do. Uh, and then I think it's looking fairly in place. Obviously, we could have a little bit more over there, but I think we're good with what we've got. So now, this human saturation layer is not going to be visible uh, when we bring it into After Effects. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab, holding down Shift and just clicking on the van shadow. I'm going to select them both. I'm going to right click on either one of them. And I'm going to say Merge Layers. Please don't click Merge Visible. That's going to merge all your layers together. Flatten Image will do the same thing. Merge Layers will just merge the two that you have selected. So I merged those two, and now that's the correct color without affecting the rest of my color. I'm going to call that Van Shadow again. What I can do then is, with this Van Shadow, I can zoom in here because it's been flattened it got it sort of lost its mask so we're going to add a new mask i'm going to grab my brush and i'm going to paint this little section out over here just so that it's roughly the same as the uh the space sort of moon color 
Um, so I'm going to make my hardness zero. Let's bring my size a little bit smaller than that. Come on, shortcut. Okay, yes, I understand, but give me my size option. There we go. I don't know if you guys can tell, but Photoshop is my least favorite software of the Adobe set. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's the van shadow. Now we've got the van itself. What we're going to do for this one is we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, but for this one, we let's go ahead and try hue and saturation. Let's see if that can just be our magic solution for everything. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So let's go ahead and drop the saturation on it. I'm going to close that there. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go and click on this option here called curves. What curves allows me to do is it gives me this line. Top right is the lightest color. Bottom left is the darkest color. And a good rule of thumb is to make an S that pumps your highlights and lowers your lowlights. Now don't worry about the rest of the image, just focus on what's happening to the van, because when we flatten it, it's only going to affect the van. That's kind of looking pretty cool. Although the, the guitar is a little bit dark, so maybe I bring that down and then we pump our mid-tones up a little bit. And do something like that. We do want to see the guitar a little bit there. Um, Okay, and then if you want to see what it looks like, you can just toggle it on and off with this little eyeball. And that makes it a little bit darker, which is kind of what we're looking for. Maybe I bring down the low lights a little bit. Oh, no, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Why not? Oh, because I've turned the visibility off. That's why. Stupid. There we go. Something like that, I think. Okay, so we can go ahead and close that. And now we're going to select both the curves layer, the hue and saturation layer, and the van layer. Once again, we're going to right click and we're going to say merge layers. And we're going to call this van. Looking pretty sick so far. Okay, we don't need another mask for that. So let's go over onto our lady next. So with lady layer selected, once again, let's hit up hue and saturation as our magic solution. There we go. We're going to hit up another curves. We're going to pump the shadows and push the highlights. Once again, only focus on what's happening to her. It's not going to affect anything else. So I want to see, yeah, that's looking a little bit more contrasty. That's looking good. Once again, select the curves, hue and saturation, and the lady copy. Right click and merge layers. She's looking pretty cool. And then lastly, I mean, the rover, the rover's got the same color tone that we've all had, but let's go ahead and do something with the curves just to keep it in line with what we've done with the van and the girl. So I'm going to lower the shadows. I'm going to push the highlights. We don't need a hue and saturation on it, but let's see. I mean, does it do anything? Takes away a little bit of color, yeah. So let's go ahead and slap that on as well. Doesn't make a difference which one's first. So we're going to grab the hue and saturation curves and then the copy of the layer. Right click, merge. I'm going to call that rover. I don't think that needs another mask. So we'll leave it as it is. And then the flag, which I think we'll be able to fix with just another hue and saturation layer. And we'll drop a curves on it just to maintain the darker shadows and the lighter highlights. Not too intense, just a little bit. And then once again, for the last time, select curves, hue and saturation, and our flag. We're going to right click and we're going to say merge layers. We're going to call that flag. And there we go. We have now prepped this image. If we turn off our layers to check that there are no holes, we can see that these can all disappear just fine. The van, we're going to have to do something with that shadow. So we'll jump onto that in a moment. Uh, there's the foreground. There's the middle ground, which is very far below the foreground, which is great. And there's our sand dune. 
Okay, so let's just quickly touch up that shadow because it is going to bother me. So we're just going to come in here and I'm just going to soften these edges a little bit. But I do need to fill in this black space here. So I'm going to grab my van shadow. Now I'm on the normal thumbnail, okay, not the mask. On the normal thumbnail, I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. I'm just going to click it once again and I'm just going to try and fill in that gap a little bit there and perhaps the same across as well. There we go, it's working nicely. And then this one over here, I'm just gonna take this one, I'm gonna put it right there. Now I'm gonna select my mask again, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of the clone stamp tool, we're gonna to hit B for brush, and I'm gonna drop this down to 50%, and I'm just gonna soften this, just in case our van does shift slightly and we do end up seeing this, then it's already done. I'm not even going to worry about these. That kind of looks natural, I think. Soften the edges a little bit more. Okay, so we should be able to stick our van in just fine. Lacquer. And then what we can do for this van shadow, because it is looking a little bit dark, let's go ahead and bring its opacity down to about 70%. 80% looks good. Let's go with 80. And there we have it. There is our image ready to be used. Each of the layers that we've got here will be brought in exactly as they are. I think we're going to flatten our mask layers just so that we don't have... Uh, an issue with um, After Effects. I'm not certain if the latest update gives us an issue or not. I'm not happy with this shadow. I'm going to take this down to 10% and just try and soften up just that little section over there. Making sure I'm on my mask. Paint it in. Okay. We'll call it there. So I'm going to go ahead and for each of these, I'm just going to select just the one layer, right click, and then um, Oh, I see. It's not giving us the option to just flatten it as it is. Uh, let's go ahead and see if it does affect it in Photoshop. Ugh, I mean, After Effects or not. So I'm going to go ahead and save one last time. In fact, before, just because each of these folders is going to be turned into a composition, and I don't need these excess layers, so I'm going to put those in a folder as well, and I'm going to call that uh, copy. Or No, these are extras, because these are the things we cut out. Just lock that and turn it off. There we go. So I'm going to save that. And then in the next step, we'll dive into After Effects. Okay. So this is going to be the animation tutorial for the Parallax class exercise. We're going to go ahead and bring in the file. I see that the uh, fact that we didn't flatten the layers doesn't affect it negatively. So we're grateful for that. Let's go ahead and select our Parallax image. We're going to import as, as composition retain layer sizes. Leave these options turned off, just say import. Once again, a little pop-up telling us editable style layers or merge layer into footage. Always editable layer styles. Say OK. That opens our composition as well as the layers. Let's go ahead and make a folder for each of those. So I'm going to call one footage. I'll put my layers in there. And the other one I'm going to call comps. I'll put my comp, not cops, comps. There we go. Okay. Now my resolution is looking terrible, but that's because I've set it to a quarter. My machine's a little bit slow. But if I drop that back up to full, we can see it's got some pretty good quality to it. I'm going to drop that back down to a quarter for now. To get rid of these guides that came in from Photoshop, we're going to go up to View. I'm going to say Clear Guides. That gets rid of it there. And now we need to turn these into 3D layers. So I'm going to select the compositions that were the groups that we've made. And now we're quite lucky because we've got the edits. We've got the original images, and we've got the extras. So if I were to collect this file and then send it to somebody, they've got everything. So I'm going to select those compositions. I'm going to make them shy, and I'm going to lock them. Turn on my shy feature. We don't need those. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my layers. I'm going to make them 3D, okay, which gives us all of our gizmos. And now we've got our 3D options at the bottom of our viewing panel. I'm going to go ahead and set the one view, which is in the bottom right corner of your viewing panel, to two views. First one is going to be the active camera. 
and then the right hand side one is going to be the right hand view. So with the right hand view, keep in mind that this portion here on the left is closest to the viewer. This one on the right is furthest from the viewer. So we're going to go ahead and start selecting our layers and just shift them in space. So I think we're going to start off with the space layer. I'm going to push that all the way to the back here. And I want you guys to have fun with this. So don't try and put yours exactly where I put mine. See if you can um, space them a little bit better so that you can get a little bit more, more out of the process, a little bit more of your own personal flair to it. Uh, this is our mid-ground, so I'm going to go ahead and put that over here. This is our foreground, so I'm going to bring this forward all the way. Our van shadow, we're going to have to put in front of the floor. But because it's on the same layer, I'm just going to make sure it's just in front. Um, then we're going to grab the van, and we're going to shift that closer. Uh, we want the van to kind of be... I guess we want the, the rover to be more in front. So let's put the van here. Let's grab our van shadow and shift that back slightly. And then let's grab our foreground and shift that back slightly behind them. Then we can grab uh, the curves layer. I see we didn't rename the lady. Sorry. So let's just call her lady. I want her to be closest to the camera. We've got our rover, that's going to be ahead of the other assets, so we're going to put it roughly here. Let's put a little bit more space between the lady and the rover. Don't worry that it's all falling off the screen at the moment. Once we make a camera, we're going to reset everything. Uh, so the rover's sorted, the flag, let's go ahead and place that over here. So it's going to be behind the lady, but in front of the rover. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle. Here we go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come up to Layer, New. We're going to make a camera. If we remember the difference between a one-node and a two-node camera, two-node gives us more options, so we're going to keep that one for now. For the preset, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this on 20 for now. We can always play around with the focal length a little bit later. Um, so let's go ahead. I think we're all good. I'm going to leave it named as Camera 1. So we're just going to say OK. And then that gives us our camera perspective. And as we can see, we're very much in need of fixing some things here. So I'm going to get into that and just start shifting things around slightly. So I'm going to pull my camera back to where it's going to end. So that's going to be there. Maybe even a little bit closer. Then what I can do is I can go ahead and just select all of my layers. With them all selected, I can just grab one and shift them all back. So I want my camera to be closer to the objects, but I don't want them to be falling off the screen to such an intensity. So I'm going to put them there. I'm going to grab my rover, and I'm going to use the x-axis. If I can't see the x-axis and I can't see it here, I can go on over, select the right-hand side. You can tell it's selected by these little blue corners. And we're going to change the view to... Uh, let's go ahead and grab it from the top. So I can grab my rover. Once again, I can now see where my layers are. Now my camera is being shown closest to me here. And using the red arrow, I'm going to shift this into view. It doesn't have to be fully in frame, but enough for us to actually see the effort that we've put in. Lady, definitely want her in the scene. Maybe I push her a little bit further back. The flag, let's go ahead and shift that slightly behind her even. The van's looking fine. Uh, now we need to grab our mid-ground. We need to scale this up. So I'm going to go ahead and just scale it big enough to fill the screen from side to side. I'm going to shift it not closer to me. Sorry, I'm going to grab that layer here and I'm just going to shift it down. Something like that. I'm going to grab my sand dunes. I'm going to scale that up. Let's take it up to 200%. I think we're going to take that to 250 because we want to have a little bit extra to either side of it. We're just going to put that there. All right, and that's kind of the general placement. Our space layer is so big. If I solo it, 
Let's go ahead and scale that up just so it fills the entire screen. I'm going to make it 300. And then I can drag it down here just to make sure I do, in fact, have a space layer. All right. So let's go ahead and save, and we're going to collect this file now so that you can't break it or lose it later down the line. We have to save it first before we can do that, though. So we're going to go ahead and hit Command or Control shift s to save as. I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop. It's because that's where I, it's a bad habit, but there it goes. And we're going to call this Parallax Class exercise. Please do call it this because then when you render and submit it, it's just easier for me to keep track of what it is. So I'm going to say save. I've got that save file on my desktop now. Now we're going to collect this file, which essentially means we're going to tell After Effects to take everything we've placed here, make a duplicate of it, put it in its own folder, and then you can take that folder and do what you want without breaking the links. So we're going to come out to File, Dependencies, Collect Files, leave it as set to All, Leave that first one uh, turned off, leave the bottom one turned on, and say collect. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save this folder to, and you'll see that it has called the folder the name of the save file, and then added folder. So I'm going to put that on my desktop as well, and say save. And then it's going to open up and show me that this is what it is. Now as a rule of thumb, just to be safe, when it opens up the folder to show you what you're looking at, double click on the work file just in case After Effects hasn't updated you to be working in that file. So here we go, it's just reopening it, and now I know for a fact any changes I make here are going to be recorded on the file that I've collected. Okay, so let's go ahead now and animate our camera, seeing as that's kind of all we really need to do at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock my Photoshop layers for now, just grab my camera, come into the Transform option, we're going to change position, and we're going to change orientation. Then we can open up camera options. We might play around with zoom, so let's open that up. Depth of field is currently turned off, but we're going to create a keyframe for the focal distance when we do turn it on. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've made those layers. Let me just get this full screen again. Uh, so I've made those keyframes. Here they all are. And this is kind of my end point. So I'm going to move those to the five second mark. I'm going to hit end for never. And in fact, what we can do is we can end it one frame earlier. Those keyframes will still register, but that means that the video will end before the animation does, which sort of continues that sense of slow motion that we get. Um, so let's go ahead then to the beginning and let's manipulate our camera. Let's move it forward. I'm going to move it to the side because I'm going to pretend that like our main focus is this guitar. That's kind of going to be it over there. Get my resolution back up to full so that I can see that that's what we're looking at. I'm going to adjust its orientation ever so slightly so that that's a little bit more straight. So that's the Z rotation that I'm adjusting. And then it pulls out. That's pretty cool. So let's go back in and let's come back to our right view. So I'm going to come back to right. The reason why I'm coming back to right is I want to have the opportunity to lift my camera up. And what's cool is we actually get these little handles. So I'm going to have it do a little bit of a spline path. So it's going to come back and then come down. If I go back to my top view, we can see how that path is going to affect it, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to do something like that. It's spacebar, just play that back. In fact, I'm just going to set that on a quarter so I don't kill my machine. But that's looking pretty dope. I think I might want to move the lady across a little bit because she's getting a bit cut out. So I'm going to come back to my end point. We're going to grab the lady layer, and I'm just going to shift her to the right slightly. So she's a little bit more in front of the flag. Maybe we actually move the flag as well. Let's shift that like so. OK, so what we can do now is let's come on over to our camera and let's adjust the zoom slightly, just so we can play with that setting. 
and let's go ahead and change our orientation so that it's looking a bit over to the side and a bit down. So we're kind of looking into the van. Let's see what that looks like. That's a little bit too much. It's kind of giving us a fake effect. So let's bring it back around a little bit more. Something like that. Hit spacebar. And there we go. Pretty cool. Right, maybe at the end we change our angle to be a little bit lower down. So I'm going to adjust my orientation ever so slightly. I'm going to bring it back across this way because I saw the edge of the rover getting cut off. Let's take that to an even lower view there. So we start off with a pretty high view and then we come down to a pretty low view. I'm going to go ahead and trim my comp to this work area so that when I hit spacebar it plays back properly. Uh, let's go ahead and apply easing to our keyframes because that's going to allow us to create a little bit more of a dynamic movement. Okay, so this is our camera movement, but that doesn't mean that we're finished. We've got this sort of initial scene set up, but now we have the opportunity to actually animate our layers. And I get to introduce you to some pretty cool little effects here. So we're going to ignore everything except for the lady and the flag. Let's go ahead to the end where I can see them. I'm going to zoom in over here. I'm just going to take myself back to one view because I don't need to see anything else. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to grab this tool over here, this little thumbnail. It looks like a attack. It's called the Puppet Pin Tool. What this lets me do is it allows me to click on a character and it creates a mesh or a point. Now, one point doesn't do much, but if I create multiple points and I just turn on my mesh here quickly. So let's have one in her head, one in her torso, one in the knees, one in the feet. So what happens here is I've now created keyframes. If I hit U, you'll see each of those pins that I've just created have now got their keyframes. I'm going to select them and hit F9 for the shortcut. And this is the final pose that I want to in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off my camera just so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm going to come back to the three second mark. We're going to miss a lot of this animation, but at least it'll be there and we'll see some of it. Oops, don't move all of them. So I'm just going to select the hand and I'm going to rotate that out. Let's bring the hat down slightly. I'm going to just make it look as though she's like arcing her back as the camera is coming out. So we're just going to make her come down slightly. Let's bend her knees a little bit. Move her feet. Whoopsie. Okay. What I'm also going to do then is I'm going to go ahead back to the very end and I'm going to add a point in this rope and in that rope. So if I hit U, there are those keyframes appear that I've added, which means I can edit them now. Come back here, and then just these, I'm just going to have them, maybe we have them coming down while she's, so there we've just got a little bit of motion on this chicky boo. I hit my beginning point and see what that looks like. She's just standing up nicely. There we go. That's cool. Then what we're going to do is I'm just going to come in here because I'm not happy with how the feet are adjusting. So I'm going to come to the very end and I'm going to place an anchor point here. This one's not going to be animated. That's just going to stop it from moving. So it keeps the point of the toes there and the rest of it can then just move around it. All right. I think we can try and do this for the flag as well. So let's go ahead and grab our flag. I'm just going to solo it to make it easier. 
And like I said, we're not going to do like a cloth simulation unfurling. So let's just place one in each corner. So that's going to lock them there in the corner. We're also going to have to place one at the base of the pole. Otherwise, that's going to be affected. Now we can put one here, one here, and let's put one in the middle. With my flag layer select, I'm going to hit U for uniform. There are my keyframes over there. I'm going to go ahead and hit F9. And I'm going to come to the three second mark. And we're just going to scrunch this up a little bit without breaking the pole. So I think what I need to do is come to the end and add a point here and here. So these ones, as I've said, they're not going to be animated, but because they're not moving, they lock every they lock that information in place. Uh, so now we can come here and I can move that and let's let's make it look as though the flag is unfurling a little bit. I know we said we weren't going to do something with atmosphere, but it's it's always good to animate something, right? There we go. So if I unsolo that. So now we've got two little pieces of motion that just add to the entire thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save. I'll come back to the beginning of my timeline and hit B for beginning. And I'm going to turn my camera back on. So that now activates the camera. I'm going to drop my resolution down to a half because my machine cannot handle this at this state. Hit play. And that's what we've got. Now we just need a focus pull. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to get myself two views. I'm going to make sure that my view, we can do the top view. Uh, it's just as good as the right hand view. It kind of gives us an idea of where things are in horizontal space. So I'm going to open up my camera. I'm going to view for uniform just so I can see the keyframes I've got so far. And uh, I need to open it again, sorry. I'm going to turn on depth of field. And at the very beginning of my timeline, I'm just going to make sure that I have a focal distance keyframe. Now I can hit you. It gets rid of all the unnecessary information. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and grab my selection tool. And with our focus distance, I'm just going to push that out. I want to try and find where the van is. I think that's... I kind of need full resolution to see this. Let me just see where my van is. That's yeah, that's that layer over there. So we're going to start at this one, where it's overlapping with the van. So that's in focus. And then when we get here, let's bring the focus back. So see if we can get our lady to be in focus, and get the other things to be out of focus. Okay, kind of place it there. Then we can open up the camera options again because that's not blurry enough for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Let me fuck around with the aperture and see what that does. That plays around with blur a little bit. But we've also got the blur level. So I think that might be more what we're looking for. Take it to 400. No, not enough. 500. Getting there. 550. There we go. So she's in focus. Things are out of focus. I'm going to make my blur level here. Make a keyframe. That's at the end of my timeline. And I think, let's see what it looks like if we don't... Yeah, <laughs> we cannot start with this level of blur. So I'm going to bring the blur level back down to 100. So it's going to get blurrier as the camera moves backwards. This is really like Let's see how far we get. If we really wanted to, we could go to the guitar or find a three quarter angle and have a floating here somewhere. Of what we're trying to achieve. 
chugging so hard it's killing my music in the background. Okay. There you go. Ah, oh, shame. We don't even see the little Marsh River. Maybe we can... Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm zoomed in. Stupid. Uh, okay. So, there we go. There we've got the entire thing. All right. So, there you go. Have fun with it. And then um, we'll pick up then next week when we actually start working on building up everything you need for the final animation.